CBS News coverage of Germany 6 and 7 will continue in a moment. Jim King at uh, the Cape is giving us a report. Let's listen. Engine shut down this morning. Our next attempt, the earliest attempt, will be on Thursday, which is L plus 12 days as far as the Gemini 7 mission, or the combined Gemini 7 6 missions are concerned. On that date, we will have one launch window. That launch window will begin at 8.43 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and last for 47 minutes. On the 13th day, L plus 13 days from the Gemini 7 launch, and that would be next Friday, two windows are available. Uh, one starting at 7.14 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and the second at 8.49 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The duration of both of these windows on that 13th day will be 47 minutes. We will have a press conference at press site number two following uh, egress of the astronauts at Launch Complex 19. The project people will be over to see the press after they are sure that astronauts Wally Sharar and Tom Stafford have safely egressed from the spacecraft. We're expecting that the erector will be coming up shortly. It may be a matter of five or ten minutes from this time. This is Gemini Launch Control. Five or ten minutes uh, would mean uh, that that director will be uh, raised again around the spacecraft just about one hour after the abortive uh, ignition. The ignition which came precisely at the second it was scheduled to, 9.54, uh, but had to be shut down. Now here's Bill Stout at the McDonald plant in St. Louis. I think the big question, Walter, is exactly what they're doing in there besides being unhappy. Bob, can you tell us uh, what they have to do at this point? Uh, not too much of anything. They've uh, stowed their D-rings, and uh, we heard that they turned off their spacecraft batteries, so uh, the power in there to their environmental control system fans is probably being provided by the uh, uh, ground complex. So what normally would have been a real busy time for them at, at this time is a uh, real uh, uh, easy one. You're sitting back and uh, waiting for the uh, 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 tower or the gantry to be uh, erected again. The D-ring is the ejection hall. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, for their uh, to uh, eject their seat. Were uh, they actually, do you think, in that one or two second period between the beginning of ignition and the shutdown scrubbing of the mission, were they actually sitting there holding something in the way of an ejection pull, wondering whether they had to use it, or is that automatic? Uh, no, it's uh, initiated by the uh, command pilot, so uh, while he was holding on to the uh, D-ring on his seat, ready to eject. And uh, the thing that really impresses me, uh, after the, the training and the familiarity with the uh, design of this malfunction detection system on board, is the analysis that Wally made there in a uh, fraction of a second. Evidently, when the uh, plug fell out, and it must have started his event timer, which ordinarily would have signaled liftoff, but he was still able to discriminate that uh, a liftoff had not occurred, either by the premature starting of the event timer or possibly by the fact that there was no uh, apparent motion to the spacecraft. Anyway, in this uh, length of time, his training and uh, skill paid off. He made a tremendous decision there, and it was right. In the space of one and a half or two seconds. That's the kind of man to fly with, Walter, a man who can think that quickly. And apparently, Sherrod did it again today. Would you like to talk to Bob about some of this, Walter? I'm not sure that uh, all the audio is coming through. Uh, coming through uh, loud and clear, Bill, and uh, very helpful again, Bob, uh, to tell us uh, what happened. Uh, this boy, Shira, is certainly a whale of a test pilot. Uh, you know, he, he, had a, uh, he had a case out on the coast once when uh, he fired off a, a missile from a uh, from a fighter airplane, and the missile chased him uh, over most of California for quite a long while. Uh, he took every, just absolutely the right action, evasive action, to avoid being chased down and uh, hit by his own missile. Uh, he's, uh, he's certainly had his share of experiences in aircraft and in uh, spacecraft. He flew the, uh, the Sigma 7 on what was 
the real textbook mission, as the astronauts and the space people, test pilots call it. Everything went absolutely uh, perfectly on that flight. Everything was done perfectly. The missions were accomplished perfectly. He ended up landing closer than any of the astronauts had yet uh, to their recovery vehicle. He was just four miles off from the Kearsarge uh, out in the Pacific. Uh, Wallace Sherrod deserves a great deal of credit. He's the oldest of the active astronauts these days, uh, 42, a native of Oradell, New Jersey, uh, where he had quite an adventurous boyhood, too. Uh, well, I think it was uh, Dave Shoemacher remarked earlier he was called Raw Raw. Uh, Raw Raw Shira, uh was the title they gave him at the Naval Academy, from which he graduated in 45. These are the men working at the base of the spacecraft, uh, the base of the booster. Do you see those two thrust chambers? And the that, uh, go in there so they could walk under there. What's that, Bob? Uh, I think that's a uh, iron grill, about like some of the uh, grills over the elevators on sidewalks so that people can walk uh, in that area. Good. Bob, can you <laughs> say where in that uh, complex uh, that tail plug would be uh, uh, where it connects? Uh, no, I don't know. I've seen the umbilical, of course, up on the spacecraft on the bottom side of it, and I believe there's another one higher up on the booster, but uh, I don't know where the one is down there. Yeah. I don't recall either. Incidentally, uh, we were talking about the possibility of pad damage. There really isn't very much, uh, I'm advised, from the Cape in this kind of a shutdown, because until the uh, booster lifts off. It's setting there on a great bucket, in effect, a great hole in the ground, a reinforced concrete bucket and flame uh, diverter that uh, that sends the flame out along a, uh, a path away from the the critical parts of the pad. It's not until the booster actually lifts off of the pad and those flames begin to sear the base of the erector and uh, along the entire umbilical tower that any damage can really take place to the pad. So there's not a problem of pad damage apparently in turning around the bird now for a Thursday launch. Bob, are you uh, immediately acquainted with uh, how much checkout procedure is going to be required to uh, get this thing in shape for Thursday? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I would say the spacecraft should still be in, uh, in pretty good shape there. Uh, the batteries have, uh, I believe it's about a 30-day lifetime, so I doubt if it will re be anything that will re require spacecraft mating. Uh, uh, I just don't really know at this time uh, exactly what the troubles are there or what the damage uh, may be. Of course, all of the electrical interfaces, that is the area between the mating, uh, between the spacecraft and the booster have all been tested out. They won't have to go through further tests, I don't suppose, will they? No, I sure wouldn't think so. Uh, again, the flame started, uh, of course, from the uh, booster when it ignited down in the pad, and it may, uh, may be that they'll have to refurbish the pad. Uh, Again, uh, much is the same uh, in the same manner as they did before the uh, uh, since the last liftoff. Well, I think Bob, uh, they were just we we're just talking to the Cape about that, uh, and uh, the, the general feeling is that since there was no actual liftoff, there probably hadn't been any damage to the pad. That uh, the flame uh, uh, goes right out the so-called flame bucket there and uh, hasn't had a chance to sear either the erector or the umbilical. To, uh, tower. Of course, there still could be something to be done, I suppose, but the boss of that pad, the mayor of pad 19, he's called, uh, certainly will do whatever's required to get it ready. Uh, we, were uh, we were told that the erector probably would be coming up about this moment. Uh, that was a very rough approximation by Jack King, the voice of mission control at the Cape. We do not see any evidence that the uh, erector has started up yet. As a matter of fact, it would not, with, uh, I would assume, with those men still working at the base of the rocket, and we saw that they were there just a moment ago. Recounting what happened this morning, at uh, just 58 minutes ago, we had uh, the most dramatic series of events on the pad uh, since, I guess, Alan Shepard first lifted off into space, uh, when this Gemini 6 Titan II uh, Aerojet engine 
uh, started to right on the precise second, but ran just one and six tenth seconds before automatically shutting down for the safety of the flight, uh, a one and four tenth seconds before it should have built up enough power to uh, release itself from the pad and begin uh, the scheduled flight of today. Instead, it shut down. We had some, uh, some critically uh, uh, breathtaking moments as we waited to be sure that uh, the engines were going to shut down completely, that fuel was not going to pour through those lines and cause a possible explosion on the pad. Up in uh, the spacecraft, uh, Wally Shira and Tom Stafford sat ready to eject uh, from the spacecraft, even as it stood on the pad, if that should be necessary. Uh, it was not necessary, and those two very calm pilots read out uh, the figures as they showed in their monitoring devices in the cockpit to the ground. It seemed even cooler than did the men in the blockhouse uh, itself. Now they wait uh, to be relieved uh, uh, from their uh, spacecraft. The hatches were closed a uh, little over uh, two hours ago, and they're certainly anxious to uh, get out of there now. They've been disappointed for the second time in this flight of Gemini 6. Last October 25th, 40 minutes before they were due to blast off, and after they had been, uh, the hatches closed, they have been locked into their spacecraft, uh, they were told that the uh, Gina target vehicle, the unmanned vehicle, had uh, blown up before it uh, got into orbit. Today, uh, the trouble was with their vehicle there on the ground. And this time, uh, astronauts Borman and Lovell overhead in Gemini 7 uh, were told that uh, the flight of Gemini 6 in pursuit would not occur today, but they were told it would come probably on Thursday, or will be rescheduled at any rate for Thursday, 8.43 a.m. takeoff. Borman and Lovell concerned about the, their comrades on the ground, and as uh, they saw the ignition start and then shut down, they were most fearful. They saw that from above the Cape. By the time they got to the Canary Islands, they were able to be informed everything was all right. Now let's go to Gemini Control. Meanwhile, down at the Cape, resting and estimating another 20 to 30 minutes before Wally Chiron, Tom Stafford leave six. Meanwhile, a few minutes ago, as Seven sailed over the Carnarvon station, the conversation went like this. 